Welcome back to this series where we are writing a book in ChatGPT, completely in ChatGPT. And in this video, we're gonna be digging into the outline. If you watched the video on Claude earlier this week, you were, were basically going through the exact same process. But in this video, we're obviously using ChatGPT instead. And that's what we're doing right now with these two series. I'm writing a book in Claude and a book in ChatGPT simultaneously. So you can really get a sense for the differences between the two platforms and give up my thoughts where needed on the differences between the two and which is better for what. So let's just dive right in. All right, All right, we're, we're here, here in ChatGPT. GPT. We're, we're going to be using GPT-4 for, for this. And, and I do get a lot of questions just offhand about whether ChatGPT Plus, Plus is worth it. Um, with with Claude, Claude out right now, I'd say there's serious competition for a free alternative, alternative to ChatGPT. But I will say between ChatGPT-4 and the GPT-3.5 model, it's definitely worth it to have the uh, Plus subscription. And so we're... Definitely, definitely going, going to be using GPT-4 because, because it's just, just going to give us a little bit of a higher quality output. output. And, and there are a couple of ways we could do this. So the, the first thing we want to do is import the information that we've got so far. I like, I like to do this in a new chat so that the information is clean. It doesn't remember any of the ideas that we didn't take. And so we're going to go to Atticus where I've stored up all this information uh, with the brainstorming first. And we're just going to copy this and say... Here is some brainstorming information about a novella I'm writing. Uh, acknowledge that you've read it by saying read. And then copy and paste that in there. It should just say read. Yeah. And well, it didn't listen to directions, directions quite, quite as well. well. Claude, Claude did the same thing, um, though I find that it often does say just read, read. Uh, but maybe I need to make my point a little, little bit clearer. clearer. Now, now we're, we're going to copy this, uh, and the above is some information about the characters acknowledge by saying just read. And it's, and it's not, not doing, doing it here anyway. Oh, oh well. You can't, you can't win them all. All right. Now, now we've given, given it this information. information. Now, now another way we could have done this is gone into Code, code Interpreter and then imported a document that had all of this information in it. But given, given that we don't have a ton of information here, I actually felt that that wasn't needed. And it's actually easier to just copy the thing into the chat itself, in my opinion. Uh, but, but you, you could, could also do it that way with Code Interpreter, interpreter because it does a really good job, job of that sort of thing. thing. All right, so now we're going to follow a process very similar to what we did with Claude and see if it does it any better in ChatGPT. And actually, our opening prompt here, I'm just going to paste this in here, is going to be the exact same prompt that we pasted into, Chat, into Claude before, which says, we're going to be using the, this structure. Please use the basic idea of the story to fill out these chapters. Feel free to add additional information not found in the original file if needed to fill out what happens in the chapters. And then we have chapter one. And these chapters, I have 12 of them, and they're based loosely on the hero's journey structure. And this is because um, I like to do that with my novellas. I think 12 chapters is a good chapter amount for a novella. Uh, a decent-sized novella, I should add. And... Putting, putting it into a 12-chapter arc that's, that's based, based on the hero's journey, journey is a great way to succinctly get a solid story into a novella-sized book. And, and so that's what, what I've got here. And we'll, we'll just see how it does with this information. information. Okay, okay, so it did as I asked, and it does appear to be following the structure that I gave it. The I will say... The results don't seem quite as good as Claude so far. Mostly, I mean, it's it's hard to quantify it, right? But Claude seemed to have a structure and a description of each chapter that felt more probable, 
like, like something, something that, that could, could actually happen. happen. And, and in this case, case a lot of it was very, you know, very chat GPT like, where it was a little over, over the top, a little melodramatic. And yeah, yeah there's, there's there's only so much you can do about that. that. Either, Either way, I edit these things a lot. Uh, the, the outlining phase is the phase where I have the most human input. I will still use the AI to kind of get a starting point, but where a lot of the edits that I do in other areas are kind of 50-50, this one's a little bit more like 80-20, whereas meaning 20% is done by the AI, and then I do the 80% to get it the rest of the way there. Um, so, so you can, can if, if, if there's, there's something, something in particular that you see that you think the AI could change rather easily, you can then ask it. And one of the things that I see here is I I'll say I'd like to hint at the dreams that Ragnar is having earlier in the story because I noticed it didn't happen until much later in the story and this is something that really should be hinted at all the way as uh, maybe the first or second chapter. Uh, can you layer in a progressive uh, series of scenes where Ragnar has these dreams throughout the various chapters. And I think that is good to go with to see if it can do a little better. Yeah. Okay, now it has actually gone too far and every chapter has something about a dream in it. Um, so I'm going to say... That was too much, or too many dream sequences. Limit it to three and layer them in with the original outline that you gave me. All right, it's, it's done okay. Um, I think this can potentially work. But, but this, this is a good instance where it might have been easier for me to just write in, like, Ragnar has a dream in this chapter. Uh, so, that's so that's something I might change myself. Um, so now, now we're going to move on to this next prompt. This is also the same prompt I used in Claude, where it says, all right, I like where this is going. Let's add a bit more detail to each chapter. Please revise and for each chapter follow the following format. And then I have it to give me a description of the chapter, the setting, the characters involved in the scene, and the conflict. I'm also going to add um, cliffhanger. I forgot to do this originally with the prompt in Claude. And so I'm going to say each chapter should end on a cliffhanger. Please say what that is and how it leads to the next chapter. And you might, you might be wondering, wondering like, why don't, don't I do this originally when I ask it to give me an outline? Why don't, why why don't I tell it to give, give, give me that everything all at once? once. And you, you can, can do, do it that way. But I like, I like to do things in steps because if, if I, I give it too much, it might actually give me something I don't want. And then I've done all that work with the prompts. And sometimes I'd rather take what it gives me, and modify it a little bit, then take it next, to the next step, if that makes sense. I don't know if it does, but it's just kind of a personal preference on the order in which I do these prompts. Uh, but you can just give it a giant template of here's how I want you to describe each chapter, and sometimes what it gives you can be pretty surprising and good there. So let's see what it gives us for this one. All right, so it is now giving us this outline here. And it, and it has actually, actually done, done a pretty good job at making this very detailed exactly how I asked it. The, the descriptions for each chapter are not very long, uh, but, but I found that it was, it was very difficult in Claude, Claude to get it to expand them. And honestly, I tend to flesh them out a lot more myself that any fleshing out I do in here is really not going to be sufficient enough for me. 
um, because I want, I want specific details, details and specific, specific details, details is just easier to add them yourself. And so, and so I'm, I'm just going to copy this uh, right here that we've got into a document here in Atticus. Uh, so, so then now I have chapter one, one the ordinary world, world chapter two, two and, and so forth. forth. And, and I can, can now, now go through and modify these to my, my liking. liking. And, and we have a pretty solid understanding here. here. Um, but, but like I said, with outlining, I feel like it's one of those 80-20 things, things where this, this has been the 20% of the work, of the work is getting, getting into this stage. stage. And now i got to do 80% of the work to really get it to a point where I like it and I think it's ready to move on to the next step. And I'll, and I'll give you one example, example of how I do that here with uh, this first, first chapter, but then I'll go ahead and do the rest of the chapters on my own so you don't have to sit through that. So we have, so we have chapter one. Ragnar, Ragnar is introduced in his typical environment as a renowned Viking, Viking leader on his ship returning from a successful raid in Francia. The chapter, chapter ends with Ragnar waking, waking from a dream of an uncharted island shrouded in mist. So this first sentence is good, kind of introduces us. The, the second, second sentence, sentence um, yeah, yeah, I feel, I feel like, like there's something missing in between here. So, so I would just add, add something to the effect of uh, it's, it's a cold and misty day and they, they are, uh, let's, let's see, with, with little, little wind. wind Bored by the lack of action, Ragnar retreats to get a little rest. He then has a dream of a beautiful woman with ethereal clothing and a, a sense, sense of magic about her. her. This is the fairy, fairy queen, which, which incidentally is a main character, character in my series. The fairy, the fairy queen. queen. Who knew? Who knew? Um, but, but this takes, takes place several hundred years later, later uh, from, from that series. And so uh, uh, a few, few things, things are going to change if you've read that fairy queen series. series. Um, um, but uh, all right, has, has a, a sense, sense of magic around her. her. He is immediately drawn to her, and it looks like she's trying to speak to him, but suddenly her face contorts into something horrific, and Ragnar feels a tremendous eldritch mind zeroing in on his the chapter, chapter ends with Ragnar, Ragnar waking from a dream of an uncharted right? uh, uh, waking, waking from, from the dream, dream only to find that one, one of his men, men um, is, is telling him that they, they have come across some kind, kind of um, uncharted island. <clears throat> so that, I think, I, I might have to add a little bit more here. Uh, in, in fact, fact I, I, I think I will. So before we get, we get to the, the, dream, the dream, we are introduced to... Um, what was his name? name? Einar. Einar. We are introduced, introduced to Einar, who has a. Com I'm just going to say he's going to have, have a conversation, conversation with, with Ragnar. Ragnar. I, don't I don't have to get, get too specific, specific yet. yet. Um, where, where we learn, learn a bit of backstory. Um, and, and yeah, like I said, I'm not going to get too specific yet because. We're going, We're going to be doing, doing story beats in a future, future video where, where we flesh this out to a lot more than we've got right now. 
and, and then, then okay, okay, then he goes, he goes and, and has the dream. dream. Um, only, only to, to find, find that, that um, Einar, Einar has, has been, been trying to wake, wake him to tell him that they have come, come across some kind of uncharted island. island. Uh, I'm also going to say, say the, the, I'm sorry, sorry this is a little, little confusing. confusing. When, when I'm, I'm doing my outlining, I tend to jump around a little bit. And I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah I, should I should add a little bit here, here and there. And, uh, uh, that's kind of just my process. process and so I'm going to go, go back a little bit. bit. Um, the dream ends by him seeing a towering pillar covered in rune stones or runes. Located, located in a, a dank, muddy, muddy island. island. The chapter, the chapter ends, ends with Ragnar waking, waking from the dream, only, only to find Einar has been trying to wake him and to tell him that they have come across some kind of uncharted island. Uncharted island. island. It, it is the same island from, from his dream. dream. All right, right, the, the setting, setting, we'll move on. on. Now, these, these I usually have far less, less to edit about, about them. them. Aboard, Aboard Ragnar's longship, the open sea between Frankia and Denmark. Okay. Okay. Characters, characters are Ragnar, Ragnar Lothbrok and Einar. Um, conflict, conflict is the internal, internal struggle trying to understand, understand the recurring dream and its significance. Um, that, that comes later. later. Conflict is... Um, the frustration with... Um, the cold, foggy ocean. ocean. And, and later, later, the, the internal, internal struggle that, that Ragnar has after the troubling dream. dream. Something, Something like, like that. that. And the, and the cliffhanger, cliffhanger Ragnar, Ragnar wakes up, up realizing the island of his dream is real, disrupting his ordinary world, world, and that is good. good. Um, uh, that's, that's a good cliffhanger. cliffhanger. So, this so this is, is the, the process that I would now go through for all 12 chapters to get, get a slightly, slightly more fleshed, fleshed out description. This is the most important part. part. But I like, I like to have settings, settings characters, characters, conflict, cliffhanger, so that we can use that for reference later. But this is good, and I'll just go ahead and continue on and see you in the next video.